Well, a trade deal with the European Union has been in the works for years now, and the government's already missed two of its own deadlines that it set for itself. So what's taking so long? And what are the sticking points in these negotiations? So here it is, your weekly West Block Primer. Canada and the European Union have been in the market for a trade agreement since 2009, a deal that Ottawa had hoped would be in the bag by the end of 2012. But a week into the new year, and the two sides are still shopping for a deal. Canada wants tariff-free access to Europe's highly protected market for beef and pork, a market that has effectively shut out Canadian farmers and ranchers. Ottawa is also looking to get more access to fish and seafood markets. In return, Europe wants better access to Canada's poultry and dairy markets, which are currently protected by supply management. The EU also wants stronger patent protection on prescription medicine. And they're demanding a chance to bid on government procurement contracts at all levels of government. But Canada says that access to the EU's 500 million consumers would far outweigh all of these concessions by creating tens of thousands of new jobs and boosting the national economy by about $12 billion a year. Well, joining me now, two people who know a lot about this trade deal. Paul Wells, columnist for McLean's Magazine, and Laura Dawson, a specialist in, interna in international trade agreements. Paul, let me start with you. Here's the narrative. Europe is in shambles. The economy is in the dumps. The 21st century belongs to the Asia-Pacific region. So why are we getting ourselves tied in knots about tying our economy to the old economy of Europe and not the new economy of Asia? Probably two reasons, Tom. First of all, despite its troubles, the European Union is a half a billion people who are almost as rich as we are. That's a pretty good market if, for whatever you want to sell. Um, the second is that in implementing a, uh, an ambitious trade deal with Europe, we would deregulate uh, the, the Canadian market and make it a better market internally for uh, Canadian businesses. So that if a German firm can bid on a transit contract in Montreal, it would just make sense that a firm from New Brunswick or from Nova Scotia or from, uh, from Manitoba could do that too, which is not the case now. So, so this is essentially this, this, this is, could take down interprovincial trade. This barriers. is stealth uh, liberalization of the Canadian market with the added benefit of better access to the massive European market. Laura, if you take a look at it, though, I mean, I was interested. I went on the, the website of International Trade today, yeah. and there on the page it still says, we expect a deal to be made in 2012. <laughs> well, we're already 2013. Yeah. Obviously, they haven't updated their web page. But what is taking so long here? Well, I think we need to... to lower our expectations a little bit. I mean, in the lead up to uh, to the segment, we talked about the tariff rates. And really, our new trade agreements aren't about tariffs. We've pretty much done away with the major tariffs within the World Trade Organization. So this is about negotiating new ways of uh, lowering the cost of particular transactions, lowering the transaction costs on regulations, technical barriers, inspections, certification, whether what we call organic in Canada and what they call organic in the European Union, whether those things really line up and those details are just devilish and it takes a really long time to to work those things out but there's a couple of big things in here too for example the patent protection for prescription medicine by Canada's own admission that could increase the cost of health care in this country by about a billion dollars a year politically Paul that's that's a tough sell isn't it and it helps explain why almost the only really active public uh, um, uh, public information campaign in favor of the European trade agreement. There's an awful lot of opponents to this deal. Almost the only public advocates for it is Big Pharma, because they would, get, they would, they would make out like bandits if this, uh, if this uh, deal passed. They say that in return for that, they would um, uh, rapidly increase the amount of research, pharma research that happens in Canada, and make Canada more of a, of, of a hub of pharma research. That's contested, but that's what they, that, that, that's what they say. But yeah, it's... It, there's a real good chance that if this deal were to go forward, subscription um, medication would become more expensive because it would be protected from generic competition for longer. But the global trajectory is moving towards that stronger protection. And so it's Canada's decision whether to move there now or to wait a bit. And so this is one of those bargaining chips that we can use in the negotiations uh, to try to further some of our own interests. You know, one of the other interesting things, we, we talk about government procurement, and a lot of people's eyes glaze over when mm -hmm. you say that word, but... Uh, Here's the thing. We have a thing called NAFTA with the United States and with Mexico that basically says if you 
come to a better trade agreement with another country, we get the benefit too. So let's bring this down to Main Street in any town in this country. If we go ahead with this, we're talking about the Europeans, if they get their way, being able to bid for road, sewer and bridge contracts in any town Canada. But that also opens the door, removes the exemptions to that sort of thing uh, for the Americans and the Mexicans. I mean, this seems to have a domino effect much larger than just the European agreement itself. Am I right on that? You're kind of right. Government procurement is a separate section, so you do have to itemize those areas that you're going to open up, and it's it's tediously slow. But at the same token, Canada has a lot to sell in the procurement market. Water, wastewater, construction, uh, transportation. We want to be selling this internationally, and by figuring out new ways to do this with the Europeans, we can also make inroads into Asian and other fast-growing markets. The tendency is always to look at what would we give up. Uh, oh my goodness, we'd have to let German firms bid on uh, on sewer contracts in, in uh, Edmonton. Um, but first of all, incidentally, that's a good idea because it means that the Edmonton firm would get a contract not because it was local but because it was good. And secondly, the Edmonton firm could go into Utrecht and, 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 and Maastricht and, and, and Warsaw and, and bid for sewer contracts there and get rich. So, uh, you know, and incidentally, Canada has already offered better access to European firms in Canadian, in Canadian municipal markets than other Canadian provinces have in individual. It's, they've already offered better access to that firm from Warsaw than a firm from the province next door has today, which is what, why I say that this is a sort of stealth deregulation. If we get this deal with the Europeans, we would have to give it to ourselves, and we would have to make Canada a bit more of a real market, which is one of the reasons this is worth doing. Let me pick up on that word, if, because I want to explore, first of all, what are, are, is there a deal breaker in here for Canada? Is there something where we say, that's the line in the sand that we're not going to cross? Hmm. Well, what they've done is they've uh, back-end loaded all of the tough issues. They've done the simple issues over the past couple of years, and now it's things like supply management, government procurement, pharmaceuticals, intellectual property, services, and those are tough. The deal might be, breaker might be supply management. The government has made a very strong stance in defending our protected markets in dairy and in poultry and eggs. They may say this far and no further on supply management, but I think they've admitted they're willing to give on anything as long as the deal is good enough at the other end. This is ending the way it was always going to end. It's now pure politics. How much does Stephen Harper want to liberalize and deregulate the Canadian market? Because he's going to have to, to get a deal. There's sometimes talk about getting a modest deal with the Europeans that wouldn't change much. That's not on because the Europeans won't, won't accept it. They're beginning monumental trade talks with the United States. And they will not accept uh, uh, a dishwatery, bland Canadian deal that serves as a lousy model for that American deal. They will only accept a deal if it's ambitious, which means uh, if we want to be able to sell Alberta beef in restaurants in Paris, we've got to allow French cheese into Canadian restaurants. Uh, and frankly, I think that's a hell of a deal because I like Alberta beef and French cheese. <laughs> And that U.S. thing, that, that is the key to the whole deal. Canada is really good at starting free, free trade agreements, but we're not so good at completing them. Once the U.S. gets into a negotiation, countries will negotiate with us to practice, and then they'll you know, ease their way up into negotiating with the U.S. Once the EU and the U.S. start to talk, we're going to be yesterday's news. So we need to finish that deal before the U.S. is seriously at the table. In the 30 seconds we've got left, can you encapsulate what the consequences to us would be of not making this deal with the Europeans? I think this Prime Minister is, would be perfectly serene with not having a deal with the Americans. The only domestic chatter on this is from the Council of Canadians and the big uh, public ser sector unions that don't want a deal at all. Um, and, uh, you know, 30 municipalities or however many municipalities have passed resolutions saying no CETA in, 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 in my backyard. I think the Prime Minister could walk away from this with, without taking a political hit at all. But Canada would lose a chance to become richer. Okay. Paul Wells of McLean's Magazine, Laura Dawson, I'm sorry we're out of time, right. but thank you both very much for being here. Good conversation.